Hey, I'm Jacob Chapman, I'm playing Ben, uh, sitting here at the house on the day one shoot of Legacy. Uh, you're watching behind the scenes, I hope it's good. Action! Don't worry. Yo. So easy. <laughs> you only watch one movie. <laughs> Make sure it's legacy. Food for me because I'm hungry. Dangerous, but cool. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, cut, cut, cut. Yeah, I've been working in the business for a long time, in the industry for a long time, and you know, as someone who was given an opportunity, I'm quite fortunate in that respect. For me, it was definitely important to make sure that I was involved in finding new talent and with the directors made sure that we, we held open auditions to make sure that new talent had a chance to shine, had opportunities uh, that, that I was given and, and had an opportunity to show their talent. We went around the country, um, we went to Birmingham, Manchester, Nottingham, Edinburgh and finally back down to London. Finding the five main characters wasn't necessarily going to be an easy choice as the five individuals had to embody the characters that they were going to be playing on screen. Uh, and also, really, they had to be believable as friends. Three friends, one mission. Get away. <laughs> Franz Dromé was possibly the most important role, uh, knowing that we had to have someone with experience, someone was going to be able to lead the group, and I think the friends uh, embodied that entirely. Amy is not aggressive like Danny at all. <laughs> but the, the, just the newness and the freshness is exciting to watch on screen. Really? Really? Mikel David, um, playing, P, playing the role of PJ, um, I think came in, possibly was one of the first people that we ever saw for the, um, saw for the role, and as soon as he opened his mouth, there was never gonna be anyone else to be able to play that role, as well as Mikel. It's PJ! He's an amazing talent. Jacob is just, he's, He's a master of understatement and he's just a really nice guy. He's got a lot of heart and that's what we wanted for them. Shay is just a, a, he's a beautiful person. He's amazingly cool and suave, one of the <laughs> coolest people you'll ever meet. So he's completely playing against his, uh, his character and, uh, and yet still managed to embody the role. It shows what an amazing actor he was and deserved the role. Both Noel and I had worked with Stephen uh, on a previous film, The Knot, and, uh, and a couple of others. and. I thought that Stephen would be the perfect villain. You don't think at all? Olivia Chenery for the role of Yasmin, the older sister to Danny. Um, this was probably the first role, I think this was actually the first role we cast in the film and I would say probably the hardest role to cast. Olivia, she delivered with such grace, such poise, so I, was, I think we were blessed to have had Olivia come in and, and do such an amazing job. With some of the casting, we uh, we pulled in a lot of favours of our acting friends. I mean, we could never afford them. Hi, uh, my name's Tom Davis, and I'm playing Roger in the film Legacy. Tom Davis for the role of Roger. Uh, we'd known Tom from a writing project that uh, that Noel had put together. I've written a novel, you know. Killers, knives, sluts, and angels. It's a love story. Fiona, I've worked with in theatre and. She's such a nice person, so I thought, well, perfect, let's just cast her as a bitch. How rude. Uh, Brett Goldstein uh, for Mr. Harrogate, the bank manager. Um, I, just, I just want Brett Goldstein in everything I do. Absolute bullshit. We saw a lot of talent, and anyone who shone, you know, they were going for the lead roles, but if it didn't work out, we wanted to try and incorporate as many of them as possible into the movie. Uh, people like Rosie Dyer, Katie Chuck, Lucy Doyle, and... Rosanna Hunt. I like you. I definitely would. 
we we really don't have a set way of putting the script together. We may write the whole thing when we're both sitting in the room or... Turn pages back and forth, do it that way. Depending on who sees the movie the clearest or who is a real fan of that genre, that's who usually takes the lead on the script. We definitely talk the whole film through uh, in as much detail as possible before we start, so we're on the same page. So, what? What? Yeah, yeah. What? what? I'd say my strength lies in structure. Um, for me, it's really important that the film makes absolute sense. I'm not worried about, I'm not worried about sense, it's comedy. Let's talk about when we go into a script, the character names always mean something to us personally. Sean! The lead character of Sean, when we were writing the project, one of my, one of my good friends, uh, a guy called Sean, he was going through testicular cancer at the time, and I just really wanted to immortalise his name in something that I was doing um, to, show, to show that love for my friend. Danny's two syllables, sir. OK, so Danny is... Uh, is based on a young actress that I met in Ireland called Danielle Robinson, uh, who really was the inspiration for the uh, for the character. PJ is quite simply named after um, the son of one of my good friends, uh, Patrick Jr. Ben, smash. Ben, ben is named after Ben Grimm from the Fantastic Four because he's the heart of that group, and Ben is the heart of our group. Come. Cam! Cam is named after my nephew Cameron, who's far too young to watch the film, so had to get him in there somewhere. It's a different kind of script because the way that it's written, it's, it's very real. You know, I was really intrigued by um, the character Sean. I mean, it's, it's very rare that you see young teenage characters, especially black teenage characters, portrayed in a positive light. There are a couple of things I really like about the script. Um, one of them is just how funny it is. PJ, hold me up, cuz. PJ holds his arm up for help. Some clearly good looking girls walk by, PJ changes from a midget to try and look casual. You're level up, you're still off the weather, yeah? One of the girls to meet just gives him the finger and walks off with her friends. Yeah, black will only take one finger. <laughs> <laughs> they all turn and scout at him. Why am I lying though? The thing that I love about the film most is just the passion. Every character has got their own thing going on. It's not one of those films where someone sat there and, you know, it's been tweaked by every person on the planet. It's someone, well, it's, it's Davey and Mark, have sat down and they've gone, we need a script, this is what it needs to be about. Let's write it. What's going on? There's no problem. There's no problem, because it's cool. Just wait here. Sean is about to say something else when PJ starts sending a message through mine. It's Yo, chill, man, chill. I came across the script like this time last year. Um, it was discussed with um, the Unstoppable team, and um, it just sounded like an amazing idea. We both really enjoyed the Avengers movie, and we wanted wanted to recreate the a moment where the camera comes in and swirls around the uh, all the main characters. Cam, get some more power. Then at some point, we started to muse on um, which Avengers our five would be. Yeah, doing that helped us create a colour palette for the five ind individuals uh, throughout the entire film. So Sean would wear blue, Ben green, PJ purple. I think Danny was black and, um, and Cam was red. In the end, uh, for some reason, maybe we hadn't actually had the money to dress the whole warehouse at the time. We couldn't do the 360 swirling shot, but you know, you get the picture. For those of you who want to pay attention, there's a lot of film and TV references throughout. You got Donnie Darko, uh, Star Wars, of course. Uh, the Michael Jackson Thriller video, it's a fan favourite. Top Gun. Hey, would you let me see beneath your beautiful Mission Impossible 3. Ice cream makes you fat. Saturday Night Fever. Taking liberties with my time, don't be asking what. Um, the Crow. Davey thinks uh, there's a homage to The Crow, but uh, it's Daredevil. It, it's The Crow. What are you done? What are you bad? What are you stupid? What are you mad? What are you done? What are you bad? The difficulties of shooting a low budget movie. How long have we got? My name's Phil Dotter, legacy producer. Extraordinary. I get shit done. What this is, 
was basically illustrating what sort of type of production budget we're working with that the producer of the movie is full sweet chicken out of a cup. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, this is the lead actress. You're just extra. Get, get the fuck out of here. You can't speak to her. You okay? Get the fuck out of here. Hey, I see. We shot the movie in 18 days, which for first time directors was mental. Um, I don't know whose bright idea was it to shoot in three weeks. Idiot. Blame the producers, is what I say. So a lot of it is to do with managing pressure and being able to deal with this on a day day to day basis. Day one, fog. Brilliant. End of the movie, it's have a really beautiful sunny ending, pissing down the rain. It was freezing for half the time, we nearly killed Amy. Someone, someone did it up though. How did you get two on? Wait, there's three? There's three. Oh, <laughs> fucking hell. Everyone on this production was prepared to go above and beyond. As usual, very relaxed and calm. Nine are prescriptive. Let's not see. bad, not bad. Oh, look at you. Oh. This is the Bane look. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I was wondering what you'd film next. Hey, <laughs> <I'm> Mario. Cool. <laughs> so we're literally about two minutes away from shooting our first scene today, which is only... I don't know, half a page long? Which is only half a page long. And, and two hours behind. Two hours behind. They're ready. They're ready. They're ready. Okay. <laughs> Tensions can rise, and in that situation, you know, people are always looking for someone to blame, and it's the director's job to blame Pete. I'm the guy that pretends that he knows what he's doing. Second AC. Pete was brilliant. He was never to blame for holding things up, which ironically meant he was the easiest person to blame for everything. A film at this level, the budget at this level, it was important to make sure that you didn't have too many takes and it was only you know two or three takes tops because you know time times of the essence. Thousand pounds. Go ahead. Six. Go ahead. Which means. Go ahead, please. Ready to go again? Okay? One more straight away, guys. I just want to get it shot. I think they uh, mostly took the advice. Why with all the running nowadays? Do we really have to run? Running again? Really? Really though? Director, producer, after all my people have been through, they can carry the counts for once. <laughs> Let my people go. Where? Just want to check the, uh, the get that on camera because that's, that's the one and only time I'm doing that. So. Won't happen again. The one thing we did have to do in one take was the paint fight. There was no way to clean up and start again. What's up, guys? We're doing a scene where uh, they get into a little paint fight. I'm going to come in, destroy them. Big bit of black paint all over them. Even though it looks impromptu, it was meticulously worked out. Against each other. Boom, 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 boom. The directors, we love them, got big aspirations. They wanted things in the movie that were slightly outside of our budget level. A nightclub. Luckily for them, I know a geezer who knows a geezer.
on your video screens and your homes Got you bouncing like the butt of Beyonce knows Never a no-show, solo, mic pro, my flow, psycho, your flow, so show. You keep it street, well I thought you was a hobo I crush you like a beetle, put a yucko in your own oh, no Motherfucker, I'm a bad motherfucker, bad motherfucker, bad, bad motherfucker I'm Aaron, I'm the DOP, we're just setting up for the Miami, this is meant to be the Miami scene Question, as we have to use it over and over, you could put it across Customers there. And? Nah, you ain't hearing me. I'm talking about customers. Hi, I'm Rosa. Uh, we're just shooting Legacy at the Chrome Nightclub. And I'm Julie, the receptionist at Chrome. How are you doing this evening? Yeah, ready for a good night. What's your little on too? So, these are the canisters that PJ brings. Look out your window, bitch. going to be a fiery night. Don't play with matches, kids. They also wanted an impressive office building in the middle of central London. Easy. I remember I have some answers, fam. I could have been checking Sasha today. Shut up. Hold on, mate. Just let me get out. At this firm, we, we, we pride ourselves on success. Okay. You just can't get the staff anymore. I believe we were the first people to ever film in the Universal offices, and probably the last. He said to us, um, can you do that again, but just do it better? Yeah, that's a note that I like to give. I think sometimes you go, look, mate, it's good, but you just do it better. And that he took it on board, and he's, yeah. he's actually doing it better. Which is amazing, so. And they needed a supermarket. A supermarket. It's maybe a low-budget movie. Am I taking over a whole supermarket? We did. OK, here we are at Costco's Norman, the alcohol scene. The scene is when my character comes up and tries to buy a load of alcohol and has already persuaded a homeless guy to come and pretend to be her dad. So then, it's, can she convince the cashier that it's actually her dad? Is he really your dad? Would you admit he was if he wasn't? I'll take your point. It's a low-budget movie, so every location had to be within 15 minutes of our base. We doubled up locations as much as possible. So, we've got PJ's bedroom. Get out. Mrs. Hammond's bedroom, Reg Reeves' party, the girls in the bathroom, and the guy in the toilet. That was all in one house. Then, Granny's living room, Mrs. Hammond's kitchen and garden, Cam's bedroom, and Reg Reeves' bedroom. That was another house. And uh, Sean's bedroom, his front door, his hallway and stuff, and Roger's kitchen, that was in the final house. We had, um, we only had two days to actually film the party. So the, the idea was to actually use the first day mostly to get what we needed with the actors and then for the other day and a half just film a massive, huge, raucous party and that's exactly what we did. My name's Thomas, I'm the production uh, runner, me. production assistant. Um, we're here at the start of the third week at the warehouse. It was amazing working with Mark and Davey. They're on the same page and they've both got the same vision, so they know exactly what they're looking for. And um, it was just great work where two guys were driven and ready to work. Okay, so this is the kids' version of Legacy. Come, follow me. So when everyone's raving and ranting, you can have it, have it large. I right, never get that part, obviously, because it all gets smashed up. Hey. 
the essays that came along to both of the party days, in fact the essays in general, they were amazing, they were really patient and when you wanted energy from them they would just snap into it, they'd give you 100% every time. We could not have made this film without them, they were fantastic. Basically the very opening, so what it will be is you're having a good time, you're partying, da -da -da, the music will cut out, you'll be like, hold on a minute, what's going on? We kick our heels off. Our main five will go from the back, they'll come up to the top, and you're all a bit like unsure what's going on, and then basically they'll do a little speech and tell you to let's have it, and then you're gonna get wild. But cool, so that's that's the first part of the day. But thank you so much for coming down, I really appreciate it. Woo! Turn up! Shooting a scene where there's supposed to be music, dancing, and uh, and you're trying to get the dialogue can be pretty tricky. Can we, can we go? Right, look to Sean. He raises the bottle, acknowledge him. Dance again. Mark and I met Paige uh, when we did a West End musical together um, a few years ago, so when it came down to the idea of being able to choreograph some dances for a film, there was never any question, it was always going to be Paige. And using various contacts that we had through, through years of, of being in the business and, and knowing a lot of people, we basically managed to punch above our weight and get acts down to the party that probably wouldn't, wouldn't have been down there, including you know, mainstream uh, uh, radio station DJs and, and, and performers, and it was just something that gave the, the, gave the whole film uh, a, a better scale and more production value, and we're, we're really proud of doing that. We wanted people to have a good time at the party, and we knew that if we could throw a party and you know, capture everyone's energy in real life with them dancing, it was going to translate onto screen. Okay, let's do it! Ah, body blow! Legacy. 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 Legacy.